Hello, today is the first video in which I'm going to show you how to make a good schedule. First of all, this will be a short one, but very important one. You can see that I have a project here, okay, and I will uh, now put some tasks because I have no tasks. What is the worst thing you can do? You can do here like something like design, then development, then let's say testing, then if you have another module, design, development, testing, and so on and so on. So let me, let me put some other tasks. So let's say we have one day here duration, two days here uh, or three days testing, then one again two days, three days, four days, one day, two days, three days, let's say two, three, four, and one, two, three. It doesn't matter how many days uh, each task will have the duration. I just want to show you an example. And I can do something like here, which I'm going to show you exactly how to do in uh, multiples way, uh, multiple ways to make a predecessor and successor. But for this example, I'm going to task, I'm going to select all task tab, I'm going to select all my tasks, and I'm going to uh, uh, link those selected tasks. And now I have a schedule. Okay, this is the nightmare for every project manager, for team members, etc., etc. What should you do? If you have, let's say here, phases, you have, let's say that this project has multiple phases, okay? And let's say that these uh, uh, design development and testing are, uh, belong to phase one, those three to phase two, those three to phase three, four, and five. So you have five phases now. I'm going first, I'm going to sell, uh, select the task 2, uh, uh, I hit uh, insert button and I will say phase 1. Okay, sorry, Tipo. phase 1. Now, I have phase 1 and design development and testing are going to be tasks which uh, belongs to phase one. For that, I'm going to select those three tasks and I'm going to indent them. So phase one is called summary tasks, a task. And I will have now phase one as a summary task. I will going to do the same thing for phase two, phase three, phase four, and phase five. And I'm going to make those as phases. Phase two, now since I put phase two here, I should outdent it. So, okay, here, and I'm going to indent those three tasks below. Now, let's say phase three, phase four, phase five. So, what can I do? I will going to indent those tasks, design, development, and testing, here, here, and I am going to phase three, outdent. So, you will see, now I have everything what I needed. Now, it is much better situation than before, without summary tasks. But that is not good enough. Uh, I will now show you what you should uh, add to have much better schedule than this one is, even though this one is better when, uh, when we, uh, it's much better uh, uh, if you compare that, uh, this schedule uh, uh, with the previous one with no summary tasks. So what can I do now? 
at the end of each phase, I will create milestone. And I can here click on task and milestone. Okay, so I have milestone and I will say phase one done. Okay, and remember, in most cases, what I prefer is that milestone will have duration with zero days. The milestone is point of your schedule when some things are done. It is checkpoint. And now I am going to say after design and development and testing are done, I will have milestone here. So I will put here milestone uh, uh, predecessor for, for milestone. Don't forget that this is very simple, very simple schedule. As this vlog goes on, not this one, but my next vlogs, when I will explain what kind of predecessors do you have, then I am going to uh, explain also how to make a good schedule, not only with summary tasks and milestones, but also with no orphans, etc., etc. But for that, you should wait for my uh, video, which will come in a couple of weeks. Now, since, uh, uh, since I have here uh, milestone as a task five, I will say fast, uh, task uh, design for phase two should start as uh, uh, after phase one is done. So I will uh, here put five. Here I can put nine is okay, but not for a long time here. No, one, one thing more here. Be aware that I can add milestone here as I did it in for phase one. So I will go to put phase two done. Okay, zero. So five, seven, nine. Okay, here, 10. But I can also put a milestone as a regular task, I will say phase three done, but I will put zero days in duration. So there are two possibilities. I can add a milestone uh, in the task tab and hit on the milestone button, or I can add it as a regular task, but after I uh, type a name, I will put in duration zero days. So now I have 14 here and now uh, it is 15. And now once again, I am going to hit insert button. I will say phase four done. Zero days, 19 and 20 and phase four Phase five done. And now I have here 24. Okay, this is very, very simple schedule. And as you all know, and you can assume that uh, in rare situation, you will have schedule like this one. This video is only to show you that each phase should have uh, a summary task and uh, as a beginning of phase and uh, milestone as the end. And for the end of this presentation, be aware that this is also not enough. For the whole project, I will add milestone, my project done. Okay, and I will put zero days and I will outdent it. Okay, so you can see it is al it is uh, uh, it is aligned with my project. And what will I have as a predecessor? I will say that my project is considered as a done when all milestones are done. So phase one done, phase two done, phase three done, phase four done, and fair is five done. And now I can see that I have 
Okay, here. I have here, all milestones are linked to the final milestone. So no matter how this, this for example, this testing can be not four days, but let's say 20 days, the whole schedule will be moved and the final schedule is also moved. The final milestone is also moved. So to, uh, once again, if you want to have a good schedule, the first thing when you, when you build your task list, remember that task list sh should start with summary tasks and should uh, end with milestone. Nor, nor or less, you can have here, like, let me show you, or in a new project, give me, give me a minute, I will say that this starts at Monday 14, and I can say phase one, and I can say sub phase one, okay, and I can indent it, and I can say, okay, not sun, subphase done. And I can say task one, task two, task three. And I will also outend them. It, uh, uh, no, sorry, uh, I will indent them. And I will say subphase one done. Okay, zero days. Now I will have sub phase two, I will have, I should out end this sub phase, I will say, okay, task four, task five, sub phase two, done. Here is a typo, typo sorry, sub Phase, okay, zero days. Now, once again, here, and after all, I will have phase one done. And I will say, okay, those tasks are linked. This is once again, this is very simple schedule. Now, those three tasks are going to have, let's say, six, eight, nine, and finally, phase one done is done when the sub phase one is done and sub phase two is done. So here it is. Okay, I have one, two, three, three, two. Okay, who cares? And this should be also zero. So if you have multiple uh, phases, you will do it as I showed you in previous, previous example, which is here, okay? But if you have subphases, you can put subphases under phases, like I do it in my second example. Of course, be careful, because don't go too far. Let's say subphase one, then sub, subphase one, and then here, then once again, another sub phase, and then put it under here, because if you go, if you nest them too deep, it will be very hard to follow what exactly are you doing. So at least you should have one phase per group. This can be initiation, this can be planning, this can be execution, this can be monitor, controlling and closing phase according to PMI, or you can, if you are building a, if you're building, let's say a house, you can say ground floor, first floor, or preparations, then ground floor, then first floor, then roof, then celebration for a new house, whatever you like. You can have one, at least you should have one phase per task group, 
but you can have multiple of them with sub phases, but don't go too deep because it will be very hard to follow and to manage. I hope this helps. Follow me in my next video in which I'm going to explain predecessors and type of predecessors and how to make good uh, schedule. Okay, thank you very much. Bye-bye.